It's 9.15, let's crack on. We're going to stretch up through the body and then we'll be crouching down. So take a moment to lengthen through the fingers, spread the fingers. We can massage that nice fleshy bit on the back of the neck as we look up and turn the head. And then as we bend the knees, we crouch down and hug the knees and stretch the back of the body. You can add on a little bit of a hamstring stretch here by straightening the legs. Or you can give a little bit of a work into the forearms by sitting on the forearms. That pressure on the forearms can be a little bit nice. Okay, plant the feet, roll up through the spine. Again, same thing. This time, maybe with the legs wide, arms wide. Find space in the body. Nice deep breaths. Hips side to side or in a circular spiraling sort of movement. And then down into a fold. Drop the head. Sink into one hip at a time. So a deeper bend in one knee. And then in the other. Just exploring where we can lengthen out and release. And then we're rolling up through the spine last time. Here you can maybe clasp the hands and turn the palms forwards and up. And stretch in the front of the body, squeeze the glutes. And last time crouching down, a big yawn. What a swan dive all the way down. Squeeze the backs of the legs, shake out the head. And then we'll come up to standing. Next one, mobilization. Let's interlace the fingers. So we've got a beach ball time position here. Shoulders down. And with the head semicircling the front. So right ear to right shoulder across the chest. So we're actively drawing the shoulders down. We can work the arms by clasping with some strength here, as if you're pulling the arms apart. Soft jaw, no clenching, and back the way we came. So there's the neck, let's take it into the arms. The arms can sway side to side. So one elbow bends, the other one stretches side to side. And you can add on a little bit of a head sway. Let's take the movement a little bit lower and start to fold. So the stretch works its way down the back. And then we do a similar thing, but with the hands behind the back. Clasp the hands, roll the shoulders back and down. Elbows together and high. So initially the shoulders are up to the ears and let's semicircle. The back, side to side, draw the curve with the head, feel the upper shoulder blades clench together, and then we're slowly dropping the shoulders, mid shoulder blades together. And then the fingers, clasp hands, that single fist down to the floor, gently moving the head, add a little sway in the hips. We want to coax the body to release tension. And then still keeping the clasp in the hands, place the clasp hands to the right side of your waist. Now drop the right ear to the right shoulder, soften the jaw, and then small movement. So opening twist, nose towards the ceiling and down, but try to let the head hang heavily. Very easy to direct the movement from those neck muscles. Just try to roll back and forwards. So we're using the clasped hands to get that stretch over the top of the shoulder. Slowly release up to the center and take the clasp to the other side. Change the cross so that the other thumb's on top. And melt down to the side. Just feel that release initially before you add on optional movement. The gaze dips down, opens up. Hopefully the crackling, popping, reducing. Wonderful. Let's work the hips, legs wide. We'll take one hula hoop, big circle in this direction, then we'll change direction. So come back to the front and then change. And then specifically looking at the hamstrings, let's step your left foot forward, plant the heel of the foot, right knee bent, hip square, toes up to the ceiling, and we fold. Let the shoulders drop. 
And as if you're pulling back from the heel until you get the right level of nice stretch down the back of the leg, no forcing. You can flop the body down if you've got quite a deep forward fold. One more breath here, and with the out breath, the foot comes back to the floor. We stick with this left leg. We're going to take a, a quad stretch. See if you can take hold of the foot. Find a wall if you need it. This is all about stretching the front of the hip down the front of the thigh. Let's tilt the pelvis, the bottom tucks under, the crease of this top of the leg, we want to eliminate it, those poor hip flexors. Think about 20 thick strings, which bear so much weight. Give them time to release, lengthen, soften. If you've got your balance, you might want to use this as an opportunity to take a, a little bit of a swan prep, so elbows together, standing legs softens, and we kind of push pull into the hands, both legs bent, not going into the full thing, because I do want you to focus on stretching the front of the leg. Right, last one for this leg, we're still with the left leg, place the foot behind, the corresponding arm up to the ceiling, the other hand just help to push the bottom down, keep that pelvic tilt, and we're reaching to the side and slightly back. Press the knees into each other, squeeze the glutes, press the feet into the floor. Again, eliminating the crease of the top of the leg. We're trying to take a stretch a little bit more into the side of the body. Breathe. And then we have those three stretches on the other side. Let's plant the right heel with the foot, toe pointing up, toes <laughs> pointing up, square up the hips, relax the shoulders and fold. So the sense is pulling away from the hip, we're finding length, but no overdoing it. So depending on where you tend to get a little bit more uh, tension, it may be a little bit more in the calf or in the back of the leg. So just nurturing, having patience, folding, optional, breathing, obligatory. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit silly today, I'm sorry. One more breath here and with the out breath, let's lower that foot. We're sticking with the right leg, stretching the front of the thigh. Find your balance or find a wall or a chair. And we're pointing the knee down to the floor, the foot into the bottom, tilting the pelvis. I'm feeling stretched on the front of the leg. Shoulders back and down, easy to practice balance. But your focus is stretching out the front of the thigh. So anything else is just a cherry on the top. The swan is with bending knees and maybe slightly flexing forwards, but please let's not lose the stretch in the front of the leg. Nice deep breath. Last of all, the same leg, plant it behind, tilt the pelvis, corresponding arm up and over. So you have the hand on the hip just to maintain that pelvic tilt so we keep a neutral spine position. You may find no real stretch here at all if there's, um, if there's no tension to be released, then hooray. Enjoy this. We're going on to series two, Surya Namaskara. Shake out the shoulders. Just coming to that kind of point of symmetry before we start. Make sure you have a mat or padding for your knees. Are we ready? Come into the front of your space, feet hip distance apart. I'm going to be mirroring you. So this is our right leg. And we'll leave with the right leg initially. All right, plant the toes, tilt the pelvis, close these front ribs. Breathe in and reach the arms up. Now plant the palms together and stretch. There was, there was a teacher I remember once saying, stretch up, place the feet together and slenderize the body. So with me, let's slenderize the body. Whatever that means to you, fingers up to the ceiling, gripping the floor with the feet, squeezing the glutes, lengthening, lengthening. We're going to swan dive the arms down and now take the chair. So we've got, I want you to keep your eyes on the toes so that we can still see the toes. And when we've got a nice squat where we're sitting back, we can lift the arms. So you'll notice I've got my hips, knees, ankles in that nice alignment. 
And then we're finding, it's that play between finding heaviness in the pelvis and then a lift in the ribs right up to the fingertips. Now I could say here, pause and find something you like about this posture. But we only have a short session. Pause to really feel a little bit more heaviness in the pelvis, length in the arms, in the spine. And we come down to the mat, fingers to the floor, briefly straighten the legs that halfway lift, where we're finding length from the base of the spine to the top of the head. Knee lunge, right foot steps back, lower the knee, release the toes. We're keeping the right hand on the floor and taking a chest opener. So either holding the shoulder to coax it open, we're also pressing into this front foot so we're not overloading on this right hand and turning the chest towards the ceiling. Any niggles in your neck, just look down and let the head hang. Try to feel like you're squeezing the inner thighs towards each other. Good. And the opposite, left hand to the floor, little toe side, hold the right shoulder and turn, navel, ribs, chest, shoulder, elbow up to the ceiling. See if you can press that left knee into the left upper arm. Soften the jaw. Now, just so you can prepare mentally, We'll be stepping back to a plank, a dog briefly, and then stepping the right foot forward to a warrior one. Lower the hand, tuck your toes under the back. If you're on fists, we won't hold it for long. Briefly fire a plank into a down dog, pedal it through, then look at the hands, crouch lower, stepping the right foot forward, left heel lowers, and press up to warrior one. Reach into the fingertips. And again, we come to that sense of the hips, finding heaviness, stability downwards, and then a lift in the upper body. One breath here, stretching that back leg, front knee over the ankle. We're tapping down, stepping back to a plank, a dog, crouch, left foot forwards, lower your back heel. Again, warrior one, other side. Hip square, spread the fingers this time. Reaching up, let the hips sink down, knee charging forwards, and breathe and stretch. Find length in the body. We finish this round. Fingers, fists to the floor, step your back foot to the front. Press up, reach up, slender eyes. Press the hands together and draw the thumbs to heart center. The same thing, but leading with your left leg. Breathe in, open the chest. Slender eyes, lengthen, stretch. Swan dive to a fold, ready for our chair. Utkatasana, so when we're in our forward fold, let's separate the feet if they were together, feet hip distance apart. Sit back into the heels and sweep the arms up. You can still see the toes, no overloading the knees. Stretching through the arms. Now find that opposition, lower body down, upper body reaching up. You can even lift the toes. Find something, there probably is something about this that you like, even just thinking that you can control the body. Even if you like lines, maybe symmetry, we have this wonderful zigzag in the body clutching at struggles. We're gonna step back to a plank. No, we're not, knee lunge. Come to your forward fold, halfway lift. It's the left leg, stepping back to your knee lunge. Step back, lower the knee. We keep the left hand on the floor for a twist. You can either hold the knee and look up, or hold the shoulder and help it to lift. So you're getting the rotation in the spine, Try and come light onto those left fingertips and use a pulling in your core to take some of the weight off this hand. Option to extend the arm. Soft jaw, no straining. And then the other side, right hand to little toe side, 
Then open the chest, start with the navel, then the ribs, then the chest. Lift. And what we want to avoid is lifting the top arm before the shoulder's ready. So if we go with the belly, the ribs, we've got that stacking of the shoulders, and I can see my armpit if I look up. So nicely open across the chest, allowing the upper back muscles to engage, to help hold. Lovely. Hands down, tuck your toes under at the back, briefly into a plank and to a down dog. We can pedal it through. You'll notice we've taken out the chaturanga up dog. Come to a crouching position, look at the hands. We're stepping the left foot forward first. Step forward, warrior two. Lower your back heel at a 90 degree angle. We have front heel to back arch connection, right arm back strokes, and take a warrior two. Shoulders back and down, tilt the pelvis, and find that vertical line through the body. Where's your center of gravity? Can we find that stacking? Pelvis, ribs, head, to chin slightly into the neck, arms out long, knit these front ribs together, squeeze the glutes, this front knee charging forwards in a thigh stretch. And a cartwheel the hands back, it's the same structure, plank, down dog, and then we'll be stepping your right foot forward. When you're ready, come down to the mat. Take a plank, hips back to a down dog, crouch low, bending the knees, and this time the right foot steps forward, the left heel lowering 90 degree angle, leading with this left arm back stroke all the way up. Find that pelvic tilt, knit the front ribs together and lengthen through the spine. Arms parallel to the floor, shoulders back and down, long neck. Now grip the floor with the feet. Now have a go at pressing down and away like you're trying to rip the mat in two. Try and draw your navel in and tuck it under the ribs. We're looking at the front middle finger without leaning towards it. We have a perfect vertical line up the center of the body. You're ready. Okay, we cartwheel the hand forwards. And you step your back foot to the front and roll up through the spine, reverse swan dive the arms up, breathe in till the hands meet, press the palms together and return to heart center. Have a little shrug out. We're returning to Pilates now. We're going to take the spine stretch, roll back. So if you need a quick child pose or lie on the back, hug the knees into the chest, it's a good time. Right, I'll come at an angle. We all get here. All right, spine stretch, legs parallel, toes up to the ceiling. If you have any niggles in your ankles, knees, hips, be particularly aware of trying to keep it in an isolate with the toes up to the ceiling. Arms parallel to the floor, shoulders back and down, and feel like you're in a Danyarasana, a staff pose in yoga. How much work it takes in those muscles are all around the torso to keep you sitting up straight. Take a deep breath in here. As you breathe out, leaning forwards without flexing. Try, not, try to keep that length in the spine and reach beyond the toes. Breathe in back to that long staff pose. Shoulders down, head over the ribs, ribs over the pelvis. Using the out breath, we take the spine stretch. So the heels, the backs of the knees pressing into the floor. The head bows slightly, but it's really just keeping a nice line with the spine. We want to go right to the end of the exhalation, so we pull those core muscles right in. Always reset at the top. We're adding a roll back and a roll up. This can be a C curve. So if we have just taken a spine stretch, we can then lay the spine down with control. Notice the toes are still pointing up to the ceiling. We can take a breath in to recover and the breath out, catch that wave, lower the arms, look at your toes, reach for the treasures there, resetting and into the spine stretch. If you're taking a C curve, we can bend the knees, C curve, and return straight to the legs. The same thing, it's just a different 
uh, range of movement. The benefits are all there. So you choose whether the legs stay straight and they roll all the way back, or we take a bend in the knees, curve out, hollow out those abs. Anyone who's taking the full roll back, you might feel compelled to take uh, the roll over. So that's always there for you. I might have space behind, we'll soon see. Lifting the legs. Halasana, plow. Rolling back down through the spine. Roll up into a spine stretch. You can almost add on an infinite number of additional movements into this, but maybe it's just a roll back and roll up. You've got the last, say, two sets before we move on. The time goes too quickly for me. I could keep you for another half an hour after this. Wherever you are, finish the round that you're on. We're going to take a Janus Sasana. Traditionally, nose to knee, but it's, we're going to call it a nose towards knee. Let's bend the left leg, left foot into the right groin, right toes up to the ceiling, reach up. Now, I'm going to get you to spiral. Doesn't matter which direction you're in. And you can see that without forcing, maybe at some point the nose might brush the knee. But we're just softening our way into a forward fold in a spiraling movement. Twice more in this direction, then we'll change direction. Then we can take some recovery breaths, use the support of the hands, and then let's change direction. So the slower, the better. Experiment with the arms if you feel you want to have a big stretch. That's great. Once more in this direction, and then we'll hold the forward form. No expectations because we've renamed it nose towards knee. So with the spine stretch, we're keeping a nice long spine here. Now with the arms overhead, we can allow the spine to flex. Take hold wherever the hands meet the leg, bow the head, and just give yourself a couple of breaths here. We can still sway side to side. This is nice rocking for the hip. And maybe we can just coax a little bit more softening, lengthening, relaxation through the body. Let's just check in. The facial muscles are nice and soft. The jaws soft. We're starting to allow heaviness to come into the body. We're not forcing anything at all. On the next out breath, we're pacing the hands back and we're switching legs. Extend the left leg, right foot into the groin. We'll start with the spiral. And you can have the arms overhead or right away, just let the arms flop. Doesn't matter which direction first. Also, you may feel the intensity is a little bit different on this side. We can be patient, accepting. And we're winning no matter what because the nose is, is towards the knee. <laughs> Let's have one more in this direction and we're changing direction. So allow that spiraling, you massaging the glutes, spiraling, rocking, all of these things are just great for reducing the stress in the body. So you're just ticking so many boxes here. Let's have one more spiral and then we'll fold. Reach up overhead, deep breath in and then melt down over the leg. Any swaying, you can soften the knee. You can take a bend into the knee. Let's not be prescriptive about how this will be. You have blood rush, rushing to the head. We're releasing tension from the back of the neck. Give yourself another deep breath in and out of the nose before pacing the hands back and rebuilding the spine and lifting. I'm going to get you to come onto one side. So we're going to start with leg raises. Hold the head in the hands, straighten the legs all wider base for balance, bend the lower leg. We're going to lift the leg, 
with the knee pointing forward, squeeze the glutes, and then with the tummy tucked, neutral spine, we lower down. You need five more of those. So allow the leg to feel heavy. <laughs> it's already feeling heavy. Squeeze the glutes, and we've got that slow control, no flinging. Feel the knees trying to stretch apart. They're straight. Long spine, tummy bottom back to the spine. Squeeze as you lift. And let's have one more on this side. Sticking with this leg, whichever leg you've got on top, we're going to do a hip circle as you roll onto your back. Take the leg all the way around. So here where we work the muscles on the outer leg, we're giving them a chance to stretch as we take the leg all the way around. The knee can be bent here. Think about the ball in socket joint of the hip and just easy out. Take those circles in the other direction. If it feels a bit clunky, that's the same for most of us. So don't worry, as long as there's no pain, we can back off out of this smaller range of movement, just the knee bending in a smaller circle. Hug the knee into the chest, extending the other leg, again, feeling distance between the legs, and then we've got the same on the other side. So when you're ready, roll onto the other side. Initially, legs are straight, or you can have a bend in that lower leg. We squeeze the glutes, tilt the pelvis, top hand for balance, and let's lift up, feel the lower leg pressing into the floor, the top leg lifting and that control lowering down. Go to the end of that exhalation, closing those abdominals in, front ribs together, tummy bottom back to the spine, shoulders relaxed, jaw relaxed. You check in with your tongue, Do you remember we were saying that when we're at in times of stress, the tongue will sometimes press on the top of the mouth or behind the top teeth. How heavy can you make the tongue? And can you allow the mouth to fill up with saliva without being grossed out? I think that's a Western thing. We sometimes don't like to think about saliva. It's actually very calming to just allow the, the tongue to sit in that hot tub, a yoga teacher once called it. This leg, we're going to take hip circles. Roll onto your back. We're so nearly there. You may want to pause with the leg across the body just to feel that yummy stretch on the outer hip. Otherwise, just finding a nice flowing movement and not worrying if it's not flowing. Sometimes it does feel a little bit clunky, but if we can start to relax and feel heaviness in the body, making modifications like bending the knee, Picturing the ball in socket joint. So the femoral head is just flirting with the outside of the hip. And let's take those circles in the other direction. And making sure we're not clenching the jaw, the face nice and soft. You're doing well. You're doing very well. We take half up and us and let this knee, this leg we're working, drop into the chest and stretch your other leg away. Great. Full up and us and both knees into the chest. Any niggles in your knees, hold behind the knees. Draw in and rock gently side to side. To finish off, we're rolling onto your belly. Oh, one minute to go. All right, hands under the shoulders, elbows into the waist, forehead to the floor. We're gonna take one round of BWTL. Press, push the pelvic bone into the floor, float the forehead, V shape with the arms, and W shape, draw the elbows in towards the waist. Stretch the arms out wide. Now elbows into the waist, thumbs up to the ceiling, squeeze. One more set like that, and then I promise you, you're done. Reaching overhead, spread the fingers, see if you can float the legs off. Bending, working the muscles between the shoulder blades. Long neck, keep your gaze down, no crease to the back of the neck. Stretch the arms out wide like you're in a skydive. 
Elbows into the waist, turn the palms to face forwards, thumbs up to the ceiling, feel the length in the neck. Align one last round, V, stretch, W, draw the shoulders down. Pull the arms out of the sockets into that T, wide T shape, lengthen. And last of all, that mirrored capital L shape, elbows into the waist, thumbs up to the ceiling, stack the hands and rest the forehead down. Take a rock from one hip bone to the other and let the legs shuffle and rock side to side. When you're ready, you can bend the knees, knees wide, allow that windscreen wide for no, no forcing, just letting the legs flop side to side. Any movement with the head that you feel like doing. And I'm going to let you take your child pose, extended child pose, whatever you feel your body needs just to finish up. So when you're ready, hands under the shoulders, rise, sitting back in the child pose and enjoying that release for the back of the body. Or resting the hands by your ankles. And... I will 